You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. Welcome back, everyone, to the Greek's Gridiron. I am Ethan Haristadoulou. It is March 8th, 2022. And today we are continuing on with our best of free agent fits series, going over teams with cap room that have money to spend. And we're focusing on the Las Vegas Raiders in this one, a team that has $17.7 million in cap space at the time of my recording this. So you people that see this three or four, five days later, don't come back to me and tell me the number's different. It was not that number when I recorded this. So let's talk some fits for the Raiders. Most of my uh, attention when I was putting this all together ended up being on defense. And the two guys that I picked out to discuss for the Raiders today are actually on the defensive side of the football. The offense does need some work. Don't get me wrong. The offensive line is definitely a concern for me, but ultimately I don't think the Raiders spending a ton of money in free agency on some of the linemen makes a ton of sense considering they don't have a ton of money to play with in cap space. I would rather see them try to build through the draft a little bit and see what they can do with that. But for the defensive side, I do have a couple of guys that I think would be some pretty solid pickups and are also not going to break the bank. And while they have 17.7 million right now, and that's kind of the number I'm working off of as I put this together, I do expect them to make some moves, open up some more money. And, you know, so things will probably be different once free agency hits, but I'm going with the number I have now and how I'm like basically constraining the spending that I put together for these videos. And that's, that's the same for every other team that I've done this on. So the first guy that I have picked out here, we're going to focus on the interior of the defensive line. I have B.J. Hill from the Cincinnati Bengals as a guy that I think would be an excellent pickup for the Raiders. Now, Patrick Graham is the new defensive coordinator over there for the Las Vegas Raiders. And with that comes a very multiple defensive front that he apparently plans to employ. So it sounds like they'll be running schemes based out of the 3-4 and the 4-3. Obviously, there'll be like the nickel and sub packages and things like that you'll see. But he's going to be running different bases of defense depending on the essentially the opponent they're playing week to week to week. B.J. Hill is 25 years old. The way he's projected, it's probably somewhere around like a three, four, five, three, four, five million dollar deal, depending on how long you want to commit to him, probably closer to three or four than anything else. And he's on an average of about eight to nine million per year or so, which is actually a pretty, pretty big steal considering one, his youth and two, the production that he has put together as a player. Now, the interior of the D-line on the Raiders is probably the weak spot there. They have Yannick Ngakwe and Max Crosby, obviously, on the edges, but it's that interior that I think needs a little bit of work. And Hill thrives when it comes to trying to stuff the, stuff the run and quite honestly, was probably one of the bigger low-key pieces of the Cincinnati Bengals' success rolling through the playoffs. When Ogan Joby went down, B.J. Hill got plugged right in and quite honestly improved the run defense. And I mean, they went against some teams that were running the ball fairly well. I mean, they, they handled the Titans fairly well. They also handled the Rams in their running game that was starting to emerge towards the end of the season really well. And B.J. Hill was a big part of that. Now, with the Bengals addressing a bunch of offseason needs between, you know, re-signing Jesse Bates to a long-term deal, they're tagging him right now. That's eating up a ton of money because of them doing that. But with that in mind and also having to address the offensive line and, and you know, so, and they have to leave money available for the future as well. You have a ton of really good young talent that are going to be do some serious dollar amounts in a few years. You can't just go spending willy-nilly. So BJ Hill, in my opinion, feels like he might be a casualty of the cap and end up being allowed to test free agency out and see what he can be offered. Now, with that in mind, BJ Hill, great place to start for adding to this defensive side of the roster. You look at his numbers, six sacks, <clears throat> 29 pressures. So he's effective in the pass rush and the limited capacity he played because he wasn't a starter. He was a rotational guy and he also had 25 stops in the run as well accredited. Again, that's not a starter. This is a rotational guy's numbers and those are those are starting numbers. He didn't start. So with that, go after him. The Raiders are rebuilding their defense. You're going to have a, you need a guy that's going to be able to, you know, kind of plug and go and, and do his thing on, on a multiple def defensive fronted scheme. BJ Hill is that guy. And I mean, 
with this change in scheme and a lot of things potentially moving around, <clears throat> I expect to see a fair amount of people moving around or even being let go and brought into the Raiders to kind of retool the defense in the way Patrick Graham sees. BJ Hill's a good starting point for that. And again, not a ton of money, really good production for a limited amount of snaps. The second guy that I have listed here, this goes back into the secondary that I'm focusing on here. And again, Raiders don't have a ton of money at this point in time. Someone could get released or a few people could get released in the next few days or even the next week before free agency starts. And ultimately, they end up with a lot more money. But I'm going off of what they have right now. So I don't want them spending a ton of what they have because you want to make sure you have cap money and you know, for whatever the reason may be. I wouldn't mind seeing the Raiders go after safety Quandre Diggs on a one-year prove-it deal. Now, if you didn't know... Went down with a pretty gruesome injury week 18. He was like nine minutes and some change away from being a free agent for the first time in his career and making a boatload of money, having been one of the best safeties in the league the last couple of years. And that obviously has now changed. I don't know if Seattle is going to plan to bring him back. It sounded like he was going to be allowed to test the free agent market. And with the injury now, that almost kind of solidifies the fact that I could see the Seahawks letting him kind of figure out what he can get. And if you're going after Quandre because of the severity of the injury, the tibia and all that stuff being destroyed, uh, or excuse me, fibula, I think is what it was. You're going to want to take a one year flyer on him and kind of see what he can do. And if he can, he can get back to that shape and form, and I think the upside is far outweighing the potential downside here. Now, before I get too much into this, I'm sure some of you are probably saying, well, what about Trayvon Morig? He looked awesome. He did. You got two safeties. Uh, they're going to be running multiple defensive fronts and defensive scheme type things, depending on what they're going to be like, you know, depending on what their opponent's going to be doing that week. You want to have versatility and you also want to have a couple of safeties because you might be running single high one week, but then you're running two the next week, depending on what they're doing because of that. You know, we don't know what Patrick Graham is necessarily going to do. So you get Quandre Diggs in there. You have Trayvon Morig on the other side, had a pretty solid rookie year and hopefully playing alongside a guy like Quandre Diggs whenever he comes back from injury only helps him grow and improve as a player. Uh, Jonathan Abram, unfortunately, in my opinion, is just not really working out for the Raiders and I could see him being somebody that they move on from in due time. Um, and again, there's obviously the risk factor. You're not going to just flat out release Abrams because you bring in Diggs. You want to probably keep him around just to see. But I mean, he doesn't even offer the like, oh, well, he has experience in the system anymore. Like he wasn't doing well. And now you're throwing in together a whole new system for defense. I mean, at this point, he's kind of a liability. So you think about Diggs and Morig over the top in that secondary. Wouldn't be a bad pairing. Again, Diggs isn't going to cost a lot of money. He's coming off a pretty serious injury. He should be able to come back and continue to play, and I expect him to reach the high level of play he was at. And it doesn't sound like the Seahawks are going to be re-signing him. So with that, go after him. 19 career interceptions. He had five last year. I mean, he's a solid tackler at that. He had almost 70 tackles last season. You can't go wrong trying to take him and see what you can get out of him once he's ready and good to go from his injury. I'd like to see it. And I think it would help shore up that secondary that let up a ton of yards through the air this past season. But those are my two free agent fits for the Las Vegas Raiders. Let me know my Raiders fans, what you think in the comment section down below, you feel they should go after in this year's free agent market, but that is it for me. I appreciate y'all for watching. Have a good one.